All right. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Alberto Vargas. I am the Associate Director of the Latin American, Caribbean, and Iberian Studies program here. And uh, we have a special program today, and it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Raquel Gonzalez Paraiso. Uh, she's a researcher, musician, and educator who has a bachelor's in violin performance from the Conservatory of Music in Salamanca, in Spain. Uh, Raquel also has a master's in violin performance, a master's in ethnomusicology, and a PhD in ethnomusicology uh, from here, from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And we're very happy to have Raquel back with us. Uh, her current research in traditional music from the Mexican Huasteca region examines issues of rituality, symbolism, embodiment, and sound in contemporary gender, globalized, and transnational scenarios. Uh, her research and field recordings have been published by Oxford University Press, Cambridge Scholars, and Penguin Random House as well as the Colegio de Michoacán, the National Institute of Anthropology and History, and the Revista de Literaturas Populares of the National University in Mexico. Uh, she has presented her work at numerous national and international academic conference, conferences for both academic audience and the general public. In her series of podcasts, Musicos Tradicionales de Mexico, traditional musicians from Mexico, available from Spotify and YouTube in her channel. Raquel explores new ways to talk about music and musicians while experimenting with expressive ways to write about the topic. Uh, versatile as musician and scholar, she teaches at the Universidad de las Americas in Puebla, and is actively involved with the practice and performance of Latin American music with the group Sotavento. And we also have here Francisco Lopez, also from the group, has a curriculum as bright as Raquel. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Join me to, uh, please uh, join me to welcome. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. And I never you know, um, thought that I would be here delivering a, a lecture because I've listened here to many different lectures. And now I'm on the other side of, um, I'm, I'm, anyway, we are in one side. So I'm going to be talking about uh, music from a particular region in Mexico where I'm doing research right now. I live in Jalapa, Veracruz, and um, I commit oftentimes, I, I do field work. Um, it's like a region about five hours from, from Jalapa. And what I'm, I will be talking about today is just indigenous music from, from this particular region. The Huasteca region is a kaleidoscope of flavors, shapes, colors, textiles, smells, people, farmers, corn, hard work women, crafts, music, fantastic landscapes, and ecosystems. Cities difficult to navigate between traffic and noise, small communities scattered across the mountains. The Huasteca gathers all shades of green, mountains, grasslands, warm light poured over the mysticism of the sunsets and a wet sun of its horizon at dawn. It is a river, rituality, a strong hand that weaves life from deep belief and a spirituality that makes you forget for an instant the abandonment classism, marginalization, and the social inequalities endemically established and perpetuated over the centuries. The Huasteca is a true imaginary and a reality that moves with its own pulse. Located in the Northeast of Mexico, it is a cultural region that occupies an area shared between the states of Veracruz, San Luis Potosí, Tamaulipas, Querétaro, Hidalgo, and Puebla. Diversity and cultural interaction are two notions frequently used to describe this multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multilingual region. It is a whole in which mestizos and various indigenous groups coexist. Currently, 
in Mexico, there are 68 indigenous groups, each with their own language, totally in 364 different languages variation, variants. This cultural diversity is difficult to summarize and synthesize. Today, in the Huasteca region, the indigenous population, 40.8% of the total population of the region, coexist and inter interrelate at social, political, and economic levels with mestizos. Share, they share cultural traits and social um, traits. Both of them permit both indigenous and mestizo practices and lifestyles. And social and power inequalities usually favor, favor in mestizo populations persist. As a cultural region, the Huasteca is part of what Paul Kirchhoff proposed in 1943 as Mesoamerica in an attempt to identify common cultural traits shared by indigenous groups in southern Mexico at the time of the conquest, and in a geographical cultural context together with the regions of Arido America and Osias America. Alongside the many different historical paths that distinguish each contemporary indigenous society as a unique cultural group, similarities have been identified that apply to the present day inhabitants of the region. Notions such as the concept of cyclical time, space in relation to nature and the place of man in nature are part of a Mesoamerican thought and worldview, that is the way in which its inhabitants understand and explain the world. These, similar these similarities, historian Lopez Austin sustain, are explained by the existence of a core system of thought in Mesoamerican cultures, a nucleus that includes elements that are more resistant to change than others. When new features are added to this core of, um, or some features change, the core is reconfigured, incorporating and giving new meaning to these elements, in particular social context. Among the elements that remain in this nucleus, the core system of thought that refers to the concept of Huasteco as a whole, are the concept of organized time in relation to the cycle of nature, a conception of the agricultural system in harmony with aspects of community life, the practice of syncretic religion traditions that interwine Mesoamerican and Christian beliefs, complex ceremonial calendars, and the ritual exchange of goods, goods and symbols. Mm -hmm. Does the Huasteca have been mm -hmm. generated their own plural identity, adjusting beliefs to needs and needs to beliefs? Despite the profound transformations and transcult transculturation <laughs> or aspects, first and later the Spaniards, the Huasteca population has maintained a certain sense of continuity that has helped to reconfigure ethnic and cultural identity. Huastec beliefs <laughs> are embedded in the social and cultural makeup of the region, particularly in musical expression. The Huastec population observes a complex ceremonial and ritual calendar that in some ways revolves around the mestizo religious calendar. With the arrival of Spaniards, the Spanish people and the imposition of um, the Catholic religion, there were strong processes of syncretism and acculturation that resulted in the overlapping of ceremonial calendars. The festivities in that religious calendar are Chantolo or All Saints, um, Christmas, Carnival, and Easter. In turn, this calendar is related to the agricultural uh, calendar and specifically to the cultivation and harvesting of corn, a basic product in the Huasteca that is conceived as a giver of life and thought. Music is central to these celebrations as well as to those related to the cycle of life such as baptisms, weddings, or wakes, and in a great variety of ceremonies connected with rituals through which men express their gratitude to the gods and ask for balance between the cosmos and the cycle of life. Music is not only integral to the sacred and secular aspects of life, but transformative. It mediates communication between humans and the, the supernatural being and functions as a vehicle to establish communication between humans and deities. The musical traditions I will talk about um, today are examples of traditional sones, usually inseparable from its dances um, or its dances, 
connected to ritual ceremony, cycle of life, uh, and agricultural um, cyclical time, gifts exchange, offerings to deities, and ret retribution. Music and dance are central to the celebration, and the ritual is understood as community experiences that revitalize the social life of the group. The sones that we will hear today are part of a rich and varied musical repertoire that exists in the Huasteca. Short musical compositions, compositions repeated as many times as needed for the completion of the ceremony, with a fixed melody and with very different functions. The most common instrumentation um, in the ensembles performing these sones are the Huasteco Trio of violin, uh, harana, which is a small cord of phone that um, the person, you, you cannot see it in the picture, you will see it later on. So harana and wapanguera, a big deep um, cord of phone. As well, um, we, this, this music is performed also with brass band. These sones are particular to the occasion in which they are performed. Just with a guitar and violin, Pancho and I will be playing, we are going to start with a canario. Is ritual music from uh, from the Huasteca region, originated maybe maybe in Spain, um, 16th century, um, and it was a cult dance. It it has um, it was in ritual in Spain, but it became ritual in the Huasteca region, and also it performed in many other parts um, of Mexico, but very different. It's also performed in Michoacan, and they are they. So with this canario, we welcome you. We say thank you for being here. And we wish you a good life, health, with lots of health. This all right, There are 50 canarios, 30 canarios. Usually they are tuned either on G or D. It's not important. Um, in the context where I, I work, you, you only play a little bit and they will know what is a, the key signature, the color, the tonality that the canario is performed. And depending on the situation, you will play in one key or the other. Usually um, for us to understand some of the chords and the tonalities, Ritual music, a lot of the ritual music is written, it's in D, in D major. And oftentimes in some songs also they retune the violin, so they will play with double stops, so they, they can create a particular way, a particular harmony. Right? And the songs are repeated often, you know, that so many times that you cannot get into that mood, you know, just prepare for, for the ceremony. Originally, much of the music I'm talking about here today was dedicated to the ancient gods, ultimately corn. Over time, through different processes of syncretism and popular religiosity, the dances were dedicated to the Catholic saints and the saints and their representations, particularly through the functions that were assigned to them in relation to nature's forces. 
the, they became part of the collective memory and the symbolically reworked worship. In other words, the saints are venerated by linking them to autochthonous entities considered to govern the, er the earthly cosmic order. They are related to the sun, to the moon, sky, lightning, air, corn, rain, land, or the hill. These processes have been and are essential in the constitution of the group and its ethnicity, and consequently, in the meaning of the music and dance involved in the ritual. The ritual is a guide, an element that provides unique and comprehensive and, and co co cohesion, cohesiveness to the group. Sorry about that. An example of this is the Danza del Chul. Every year from August 12 to August 15, Osuluama in Northern Veracruz dresses as Chul. The significance of this dance is in this municipality from Veracruz goes beyond the cultural expression itself. It is a celebration in which the community is involved in a massive way and through which the social and ideological space of Osuluama is given new meaning. Dancers, women and men are committed to dance year after year. Del Chul was dedicated to Isli Saintly, goddess of corn. In mid August, harvest time, music was offered so that the goddess would protect the cornfields from animals that could harm the harvest. Many of the songs they have names like El Conejito, El Caballito, El, El Coyote, just representation, and the dances, the choreography sometimes represent the names, the, the, um, the movements of these animals. A dance initially performed exclusively by men, the dancers represent both corn plants and warriors. Since in pre-Hispanic times, the borders of the territories were in constant struggle with invading groups. After the arrival of Spaniards, the dance was dedicated to Virgen de la Asunción instead of Isis Saintly. Women have been dancing chul for at least 80 years now. So let's have um, let's have one more example of El Chul, and this is. Um, a song called La Leva, and different groups of, um, of different comparsas are playing together in the park. <laughs> Thank you. 
little bit of the space in that part where there is not only this group of dancers and musicians, but there are many scattered through the park and they spent all day dancing this dance. I'm gonna move to a different one. La Danza de Xochitine, the carriers of flower, refers to a complete experience of music, dance, and aesthetic and symbolic content. In the Huasteca, the term dance or danza is polysemic, and it refers both to the group of dancers and to the dance itself, which is inseparable from the music. Roman Güemes Jimenez tells me about the myths of Xochitine, and he tells me, there was no light in ancient times and humanity lived in darkness. The gods said, we need to help humans. We should send them the Sonkomali, the sun, and they should get ready and prepare to show their music and dances, dress up as beautifully as they can to welcome the Tonantintoto, the firebird, the sun. And he continues, in preparation, the dancers dressed in costumes adorned with flowers. They were called Xochitine, los portadores de la flor, the flowery men, the carriers of the flower. They welcomed the sun, but the sun was so strong that it destroyed the universe. Xochitine then immolated themselves for humanity. As that humanity perished, gods molded men out of clay, but they, they walked about aimlessly and did not survive. Finally, the gods created them out of corn and became the humanity we are part of today. The god fed them the sacred seed, corn, chikomesochi. Symbolically, chikomesochi, in human form, boy-girl duality, gave life to humanity and was sacrificed for them. In return, humans give life to chikomesochi through the ceremony. Xochitine is danced for the deity, not for an audience. Musicians and dancers are considered sacred. They are the Xochitine, those who sustain and uphold the cultural tradition. Roman told me. is the one who is in the center. Here he is dressed in, in, in black. It's called Quatlili, the captain. And then he does the choreography. Dancers watch him and they and they follow. Um, I'm gonna play one more Sochitine from a violinist that I really like. He's playing, he, his name is Fidencio Ramirez. I, um, I have transcribed a lot of music from him and he lives in a beautiful um, place called Jojocapa in, in northern Veracruz.
to go to pretty much to the United States to work. And so if they want to continue with the musical tradition and the function of the music, so girls are dancing. And that's OK. I mean, no one is saying anything. And, and it's totally accepted. And you know, it's very, actually, very <coughs> cool. So behind Don Fidencio and the group of dancers, there is the Virgin adorned with flowers. And then is the brass band. And then the women who are singing Catholic mm, chants. So it's Dressed in time and reality, there was take a breeze among its fertile and changing green, its complex social reality, the strong river of our spirituality that guides and gives meaning to many aspects of Huasteca people's life. In this region that is built from its that is built from its geography, its nature, its inhabitants, and its daily passage through history, its multiplicity cannot be easily sum summarized. I'm gonna play um, uh, Sochit. So it's a, it's a song it's a, um, that is performed in many different, different occasions when a baby is born, um, when there is a, uh, any kind of celebration, any kind of ritual occasion, they uh, perform So Chitisawat. And I chose this to be performed on banda so you can hear the different context of, of the music. Chipisawa is a ritual song that is performed on multiple locations and it's considered a hymn in the Huasteca region. Most of the indigenous songs are instrumental and are performed by the, the Huasteco trio, as we saw, and also brass bands, like this last example. On January 2016, I recorded violinist Galdino Osorio, um, quinta player or guapanguera player, playing with Amador Osorio and with Eber, my friend. I went to their community to, I wanted to record Sones, Sones de Boda, Sones for the weddings, for the Huasteco wedding. And, um, and he, he recorded this Aguacero. This, this song that we are gonna hear is also performed for the Lavamanos ceremony. Lavamanos is a ceremony that they do um, to free from obli for their obligations um, with godmothers and godfathers. So when, when the, the godsons or goddaughters have, are old enough and they don't want to burden um, the godfather or godmother with whatever obligation they have, they do this ceremony where they prepare food and they play music and they dress the, um, the, the, the goddaughters and, and godsons. And so this aguacero works for lavamanos and for wedding. <laughs> Thank you. 
people play, I mean, uh, but um, particular performance like Albino, they know a uh, particular repertoire for the region with a um, style that belong to the region. So along with Carnival, Chantolo or, Se or Saints or Todos Santos is one of the most, if not the most important celebration in the Huasteca Fiesta calendar. Both Carnival and Chantolo are deeply related they mark the beginning and end of the two annual corn harvests in the region. The carnival marks the beginning of the milpa de sol or dry season. And for Chantolo festivity, got goods from the rainy season must have already been collected. It is during Chantolo and carnival when communication between the living and the dead takes place. During Chantolo, music is the channel that allows this who those who inhabit, in, inhabit the underworld, the dead, and heaven, the saints, to be present on the early level, earthly level. The sones de Chantolo are considered the means through which the spirits of the ancestors communicate with human beings to share the celebration, the joy of life. The fiesta is the occasion for the symbolic exchange of and reci reciprocity, which are essential in sustaining balance in the universe. Ancestors watch over the living throughout the year, and Chantolo is the occasion to give back and welcome ancestors with their favorite food, drinks, copal, incense, flower, candles, music, and dance. For the three days the fiesta lasts, sones are played and dance at homes, in front of the altars, at graveyards, and at the streets. Music and dance are basic to the ritual celebration. Ancestors are invoked through music, and dancers become the reincarnation of the ancestors. Those who came before us take care of us throughout the year, and Chantolo is the time to thank them, offer them what they like the most in life, and share the celebration with them. It is a reunion in cyclical time, offering affectivity and spirituality in dialogue, life commitment. Although Chantolo is celebrated throughout the Huasteca, nuances are ever present depending on the sub regions, communities, and ethnic groups. While music and dance are basic to the ritual celebration, there are some places, such as in southern Veracruz, where sones performed during Santolo, such as Vinuetes or Mica Sona, sones for the dead, are not danced. Not in all places, the, the, the masked groups called cuadrillas, comparsas, viejos, dance through the streets in front of the altars, the, or the offerings, or in the, in, the, in the tombs during the three days that the festival lasts. In places where dancing takes place, music and dances hold particular interpretative styles. In some places, people only go to the, to the cemetery to share food, drinks, prayers, and music that the deceased liked and that the band or trio plays or requests. When dancing, you should wear your mask at all times so that one recognizes you and takes you away. <laughs> The music practice 
continues to consolidate the history and culture of the communities, which corresponds to a series of norms based on reciprocity. In any case, the music, the smell of chocolate, tamales, cinnamon, sweet bread, copal, cempasuchil flowers, or the sound of rockets calling the dead are intoxicating and tell you that you are there and that your annual commitment has arrived. You play and dance for the dead. Music catalyzes colors, smells, and feelings. The Pantheon becomes the center, a meaningful life that opens the way for those who return and to whom we offer gratitude. The link with the afterlife is serenity that helps on the path of the cycle. for a different experience. This is um, it's going to be in El Igo, in Northern Veracruz as well. Um, it's performed by Compasta La Curva. At the end of the day, after being strolling the streets playing music, um, they will gather in a, um, in a location where they, they place a huge tarima, wooden platform, and every single comparsa, they could be it could be like 10, 12, 15 comparsas. Each comparsa can range from um, 30, 50 to 100, 200, 400 people, and they dance, um, you know, over over the big tarima, the big wooden platform. <laughs> You can come up with them and you are invited to dance and it's just the rhythm the is the the the, the musical the song it's simple enough that you can you learn and you remember the choreography and you just are part of the group and that's the, the strength of this musical expression so we are going now to carnival remember they are they are related uh we are going to go to sochatipa to hear um, son de carnaval
channel as mentioned from the is when the channels of communication between the living and the dead are open. All souls are involved in Shantolo, but only those who have died of natural causes arrive in Shantolo during all saying. It is during carnival when those who have died by accident or violent deaths consider unnatural arrive. That's why in carnival and um, is a, that's why carnival is a festivity dedicated to the to evil, which is not considered a, a diabolic figure or a representation of the bad, but is a is a dual character, a dual representation of good and bad. Comparsas go out to dance in some parts of the Huasteca, but not in others. And um, part of the musical repertoire is also shared with that performed during Chantolo. This is Carnaval in Santa Maria. in all these celebrations that symbolize heritage and cultural values, community and continuity, recreation of the old from the new. Through music, meanings are transmitted to the group and the physical and spiritual connection between the members of the community is strengthened. Carnival records the sense of obligations and reciprocity through the responsibility of being a captain for the carnival. Captains pay for the musicians, feed the costume people who dance in front, of, in front of the houses and feed the community. The big tamal called Sakawil. I know 50 pounds each one. The food is huge. And they make like eight. The big Sakawil tastes, tastes like fiesta. This is on the Comatlan. It brings people together in, in spaces of exchange, cohesion, and solidarity. Music weaves the sonic and affective space of the social ritual occasion in which it is performed. Sones are a means for building a collective sense of community. There would be no party without music and dance. As in other musical cultural cultures, traditional music from the Huasteca share codes of sound comprehension and understanding. Sones are recognized and, and, and understood by their sound, their flow, the dance, the bodies that dance them. There is an enormous repertoire of sones. Depending on the place, the same son can have different functions and be performed for different occasions. And of course, each musician would perform their own musical style that will tell you that he, she is from a particular region or locality. Musical traditions are malleable and are being updated to be an expression of the cultural group, the ever-changing community. 
Like everything else, the celebrations in which this music is played have changed over time, accommodating changes and transformations in, so in society itself. Human mobility, changes in agricultural production, cultural policies, or the interests of different power structures are aspects that directly affect festivals and celebrations. Although music and dance continue to be central to the festival and its meaning, a connection point that articulates deep meaning for the collective, one of the current problems is the transmission of all this music. Is it anchor? Is it anchor? If, if it is anchored in a past where time seems not to correspond to the veracity and speed of today's society and its immediacy? How to reconcile the context for this music that is linked to a function at a particular place within the mobile society and the intense migration the region goes through at present? Can we hear the other from it? Can we listen to the other, even if they are performing this music in California, Denver, Madison, or Dallas? Can we get closer to it and listen to, our, to ourselves from it? I would like to finish today playing a song huasteco not connected to rituality. Song huasteco or huapangos, as they are also called, are part of a super genre um, of music we call son mexicano, a generic term that describes a complex of musical genres that, ver that um, the various regional subgenres that make up the complex and the musical style itself, which is performed by small ensemb ensembles, consistent primarily of chordophones, with or without singing and dance. It serves the, to entertain, but it also is um, performed as celebratory occasions and in rituals. So son es huastecos, mestizos, there's another name we can use for those, are used more for entertainment, or it's like um, many people are playing nowadays, um, son jarocho would be the, the brother, sister of son huasteco. This is a uh, group Tlacuatzin playing la huasanga in, um, in Tantian. friends, we work with them. Don Victor Ramirez is a fantastic violin in the back, the violin. It's a, he's 84. Yes. I mean, he doesn't know. He, they, you know, like in many parts of Mexico, sometimes you don't even have like a, like an, uh, you know, registry for your birth certificate. 
Um, so anyway, um, and then Eloy and, and Yuyu, and this is a festival, this is part also of, um, of my research. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. I want to thank you. Um, thank you, Alberto and Luis and the entire you know, team, Sarah, the entire team at Lassis for making this possible. And um, Lois, Marino, I can't remember your name, Stephanie, Amanda, what is your name? Mariana. Mariana, thank you. What is your name? Emmanuel. Catherine. Catherine. Alberto, Ralph. Ralph was part of that in that carnival. In he was there with us. Um, Jose, thank you again for you know making Madison our home. And what is your name, sir? Edward. 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 Thank you. So thank you all for coming and being here. Thank you also people who are listening to us you know, via Zoom. If I don't know if you we have maybe like five minutes for questions or something or comments or things that you would like to share. Yeah, I think it's a question. Yeah. But my comment is uh, I, I know that that music is very lively and bouncy and active and sort of happy, which contrasts greatly with the uh, Yaradies and Wainos. Um, and uh, I was wondering, uh, even, even when, when they're dancing on the graves, they, they seem to be very happy and, and lively. And I suppose that's characteristic of that tradition. Uh, but my question is, um, of all these, uh, you said 68 groups, what was your main reason for choosing to do research on the Huasteca group rather than a different group? In, in in Mexico or or in any other country. Mm -hmm. In the Huasteca region, I mostly work working with Nahua people. These 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 traditions that that you've seen today, it's mostly communities mestizo or inhabited by people of Nahua ancestry. I chose the Huasteca because of the music, because of the music. Original. I did research in different in different parts of Mexico. I have done research in in Tierra Caliente and hotlands of uh, Guerrero, Michoacan, and also a little bit in southern Veracruz. But um, it was um, I wanted to when I did my postdoc, I wanted to work with Don Fidencio, this violinist, one of the violinists who had been playing carnival music. And one thing brought me to the other, and there is so much music there. Um, I mean, it's like I'm researching just a little tiny part of um, the, the musical richness and traditions that are there, but it was the music, you know? but if I could live like five different lives, I would go to other parts of Mexico and work on, you know, on other, on other music. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Wow. I don't know, you could talk a little bit about the violin and like what's happening with the violin and I mean the flute instrument you play, um, how it's been playing now and like for example brass music has it had some impact on like the people learning the violin and like its meaning, like why it became an important part of instrumentation and whether like if there is people to play are they still playing. Uh -huh. There are many questions in that. Yeah. So I'll try to summarize. Okay. Um, violin is very popular in Mexico. It's performed in many different musical traditions. It was one of the instruments that the Spaniards brought. It was one of the instruments where if you played, you could get to heaven. You see, the violin and the harp. Um, probably we need to be thinking that at that time, you know, 16th, 16th century violins would be different. But anyway, was one of the instruments that was taught in the, 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 the chapels, in Las Capillas, where they taught a lot of music. And, you know, this thing, there's always like this mixture of um, secular and, and religious traditions. And people use up different, you know, like the canario that can be performed at church, but also in other contexts. And it's always, you know, um, a, a mix of um, musical styles. So violin is very present in the Huasteca and in other regions. Brass bands, the, the brass instruments um, started to be came in, in to Mexico probably in 1900s, basically. 
And indigenous people have adopted that like it's their own. Like indigenous people think violin, you know, belongs to them and in fact belongs to them. I think that the, the musical instruments have a meaning because you perform them in a particular musical traditions where you give the meaning, it gives the meaning to the musical instrument. So even if colophones came from Europe and whatnot, but they are indigenous to the, to the region, basically. So um, a lot of people are learning um, musical traditions, not that much these particular um, traditions that I have played, you know, um, Sones de Chantolo in, in a few places, yes, there are a lot of people are learning those sones, but um, sones that they, you will play for wakes, sones that you will, Sochitine, not many people are learning those traditions. Those traditions are dying out, you know. Um, Danza del Chul, not many people play those musical traditions. Um, and also many people play, play right now brass dance because it's a, it's a source of money and income because they not only play ritual music, but they also play it in any kind of, uh, you know, quinceañera or festival or party, more or less. And also violin is, is, is used up like in this very last um, Son Huasteco, the Mestizo one. I mean, it's, it's heavily, you know, based on violin. Also in the music from Guerrero, so it's from Guerrero, it's violin, um, mariachi, all mariachi traditions, it's violin. Um, Mm. Pirequas, uh -huh. yeah, too. So in many, many different traditions, probably I'm forgetting some. Did I answer? No, I didn't. Thank you for your presentation. Can you say something about the left-hand musicians? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but, but in some cultures, you know, they are considered the most talented. Yeah. But then can they be left-handed in everything they do? Yeah. Can they eat left-handed? Yeah. The, the girl in the picture? Yes. Left-handed. And a, and a fellow at the beginning. Uh-huh. And a lute player also. Uh, exactly. Um, in fact, like yeah. Him. Yeah. Um, many of them. They are not, I mean, they are considered, you know, special some, somehow. But it's mostly... Um, in in more in ritual locations, some um, musical traditions, um, you know, deeper embedded in the communities, the the violinist is considered the leader. Also, oftentimes they are wewetlakas or the wise people who knows the do medicine and and they are communicating with with the gods. They oftentimes used to play violin, so it was something. It was their musical traditions more. Uh, linked to the communities and and so they are the guides they are the visioners they see through and they guide and for example with Don Fidencio in the procession with Sochitine mm -hmm. so first the two two men will wear the flag Mexican flag and then the the trio drives the procession Not stopped much about, but. Well, we have probably time for one last question. Um, I was going to ask you, Raquel, how important is the, or how relevant is if you found some communities that were monolingual or the role of the, of the, in, the indigenous languages in, in, in your research and how do you interact with the community that's a great question alberto sometimes well i don't speak now and I, it's one of my my projects many many of these communities are bilingual basically but many musicians i mean they speak spanish but um they prefer now basically when i Sometimes you cannot go to some communities and just show up. You have to do, someone has to introduce you mm -hmm. and pay respect to, you, know, you remember in Santa Maria de Carnaval that we did that everyone is wearing like, um, you know, raincoats. Rain mm -hmm. So we were, um, we drove with a friend of ours. Uh, we drove like five hours for a road that had no, indications no signals no nothing so this is a dead road so this person brings you to the this community is an otomi community we don't speak the language either so we went and the first thing that we did went was to talk to the to the mayor 
of the, the little town. And they are suspicious at the beginning, but then they did, we didn't talk. It was our friend who, who did the introductions and, and said, can, can they be here for the, for the day? Uh, she had been working with Don Fidencio, the violinist, and, and he's waiting for her. But I have not been able to communicate with Don Fidencio because they, he lives in a community where the phones don't work, oftentimes. So when I was doing research with him, they announced it on public, on indigenous public, um, radio that so it's around. So um, Raquel Paraiso is coming with Arturo Castillo and they are going to visit Don Fidencio because they are, she's going to record and blah, 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 blah. So he knows that I'm coming, but there is no other way. That. Um, so you have to pay respect that the, the mayor at this particular community said, yes, they could be with us all day long. They can even sleep here, you know, all the night. Um, la, the last time that I was doing, I'm doing research now on Sochitine, and I had been recording a violinist who speaks both languages, but it's mostly now. So it's, you know, like we all have experienced that, like in some context you speak both languages, sometimes it's just you can only one, speak one, sometimes not even one of them. <laughs> with this violinist, I, I asked my friend Eber if he could come with me. He had been coming with me to many different places. He's a musician too, so it's very handy because if, if I'm going to record with someone and there is not a musician, Eber can fill in. So we went to talk to this violinist and we recorded, Ever was with me and another person who had me help locate where these musical tradition is performed because sometimes they don't tell you we are performing such day and this and this and this. No, sometimes they perform for um, the, the all for the saints of the of the village of the community. Sometimes for Christmas. Sometimes so you have to be in contact with someone in the region unless you are in the region just that they know when they are playing. And I went with Ever and this other person who is completely bilingual. And um, even if I talk to the, the violinist, he would always answer back in, in our and to them, not to me. I'm a woman and I'm foreign, mm -hmm. you know, mm. and my skin is light. So, I mean, and I, I think that I do okay fitting in and, you know, being respectful and listening to what is happening when you do research and that's how um, I can navigate all this and they, you know, you know all the things that you need, you need to bring. You are not going to pay musicians, but you always buy something for them, some food or uh, whatever they want or some beer if they want something, you know, or sometimes they ask for Coca-Cola and still it's very mm -hmm. heavy on refrescos. Mm -hmm. I think there's a... Yeah, we, we just have one question here. Well, first of all, a lot of thank yous for many people. Um, in this style, do violinists use standard tuning, uh, GDAE? Is there much in terms of experimental tunings or sounds? Usually in, in all this music, the tuning is, is tuned GDAE, like the regular violin, but instead of being tuned to A, 44, which is the frequency that we tune, is much lower. Mm -hmm. It's usually half a step lower. So they, they say um, we are tuning in F instead of G. They don't give you a name like, like you know, in traditional classical music from um, Western tradition. You tune and the oboe, the orchestra will give you this, right? They don't. This. And usually it will be it will be like this. So, but generally it's the same tuning, regular tuning, except that for some, some ritual traditions, they tune this G to an A. They bring it lower and the, the sonnets are performed in D. So you are always playing the same, the same notes and reson the violin resonates differently and they are playing double stops. So, but usually it's the, it's the same tuning, no? but much lower. Also, because the singing, whenever it's singing, like in the song was taken, like at the very end, they use high falsetto oftentimes. And, and so it's very tiring for the voice if they have to be singing you know, that, that high. And, and also the liking, how, how they like the tuning. It not only happens in the Huasteca, but it happens, happens in many other different, different regions in Mexico where they tune the violin lower, my, th my thinking is that it's more intimate, a little bit lower tuning. Um, like instead of you know, 44, it will, it will be 
um, 438, 437, 36, you know, and it might come from Baroque traditions when music, you know, they were, the instruments were tuned lower, who knows, or is just what they prefer. Is it a five-note scale or a seven-note scale? It's a seven-note scale. Hmm. All right. Well, we uh, we run out of time, but uh, we really thank Raquel and Pancho for this yeah. wonderful celebration of life. Very happy to be able to have this opportunity. Thank you very much.